Okay, so welcome back. Um, in the last videos, we created a pattern and uh, this is the resulting pattern that we created. And as part of any graphic design piece, you're gonna probably have to include some sort of text element to the design. Um, if we were just to do a quick Google search and I typed in graphic design, the chances are that you're gonna see images that are going to have some text on. So you can see there's all, always there's some sort of um, text element to any sort of design. Good example there. Um, so it's really important to be able to manipulate type and not just slap it on. Um, you know, I've been teaching for a long time now and, and designing for a long time also, but um, it's really important that you don't treat type as an add-on and you treat type as a, a fundamental part of the design, almost illustratively. Um, so in this video, we're going to look at the text tool and how we can use type a little bit in, with an illustrator. So we're back into the same document and I've just added a new artboard and then I'm going to click on the text tool and I'm going to click and by default it will give us a little bit of text and it gives us some Latin called lorem ipsum and lorem ipsum is a um, it's Latin and it's just a, a way of putting in text so that it looks like text but it doesn't read you can't read it because it's Latin unless you understand Latin then you wouldn't understand it um, so when you click and um, it'll just create a, a, a set of um, characters a word to if you click and drag it will give you a like a paragraph a text box um, so there's different ways of creating text in Illustrator um, so let's just put that, go back to that again so click creates just a piece of text and click and drag creates a text box now the difference between those two things is if I click and drag this text box the text inside it doesn't get any bigger it's just the shape of the text box that changes. So you can see that the text inside doesn't actually change. Whereas if I grab hold of this one and I drag, the text actually gets bigger. Because this is line uh, based, I can't remember actually the name of it, line based I think we call it. That's definitely a paragraph or text box. Um, but this is by clicking, just, just clicking and typing and this is by clicking and dragging. Um, so depending on what you're going to do will depend on whether you want a text box so if you've got a lot of copy you probably want a text box because you want to be able to you know make it fit a specific area but if you're doing something like a title or some simple, simple words then perhaps maybe just clicking and typing is the way to go so let's just um, click and then so let's type in the word pattern now by default you'll see that um, it's 12 point Myriad Pro regular. So the properties like um, we had before that were up here when we were working with shapes and things are slightly different. So when we were using lines and things, we had different things here. Um, when we add type, uh, it gives us typical sort of like text edit sort of um, properties. So the point size, um, the style and the font. So let's just make that a little bit bigger holding shift down to make sure it stays in proportion. You can actually squish this and uh, stretch it. But like I said to you before, probably not a good idea. Uh, you can get away with it a little bit more with type. Um, so sometimes you do need to squish and squ stretch and squish things a little bit. Um, but you don't want to go too much. So it's all right doing like a little bit, you know, a little bit like that or a little bit like that. But what you don't want to do is like that. It looks, it looks wrong. So let's just go back to how we were before. Okay, so you can now see that if I highlight it, the text size is not 12 points anymore, it's like 84 point. So as I scale it up, it increases the properties in the specific areas accordingly. So by default, Myriad Pro. So let's have a look and see what um, what fonts we've got. So Myriad Pro. So in your, in your font library, by default, you'll have a range of different fonts. And all the different fonts have different properties. So some have... Um, different styles, characteristics, things like that. And they're classified by uh, these types of um, info, this type of information. So 
we've got things like sans serif. So sans serif is without serif, it's without the little flicks. So these little flicks here, and they're serif. So anything that's got a little flick, so this one here, that's a serif, and that one's a sans serif. That one's a serif, sans serif. You've also got script, you've got black letter, you've got monospaced. Monospaced is each character fills the same amount of area. So an M, which is traditionally one and a half times the size of a typical character, will be the same size as your O or your I or whatever. Um, you've also got hand-drawn and you've got decorative. So you can search through your type library using these uh, filters. So you can say, I want a sans serif typeface and it'll just find your sans serif typefaces. Or you can say, I want a serif typeface and it'll find your serif typefaces. Down here, you've got different properties. So you can say, I want light or I want heavy and it'll find you those characteristics of the fonts that are in the library. Um, so it's a good way of finding fonts if you want to if you want to do that. If you know you're looking for a specific font, you can go through the filter. But if you don't know what you're looking for, then the best way is probably just to just to scroll through them and see which ones you like the look of. And it's a case of really um, just trying different things out. So if we were creating some words to go with this uh, pattern here, then we might use the word lemon um, and melon. And we probably need to go through a series of experiments to see what fonts look good. So I've started there with one font, so let's try a different font. So let's go to character. So let's see what else we've got. So let's try that one. And let's try a different one. Let's try some, some different ones. Let's copy and paste again. So the more you copy and paste, the more you've got the chance of seeing things. Let's try a, a sans serif. So that's that one. And then let's try something else. Uh, let's click on that arrow. Um, what else we've got? Black current squash. What's that one? That one looks interesting. And let's try some more. Let's see what else we've got. Um, let's go brush script. So try different fonts to see which ones look good. You know, if you don't um, look at them, you won't see what they look like with the word because they all look different when you actually use the words that you're going to use. So you might not like that M, but you might like that E or whatever it might be. So always use the words that you're going to use within your design. And, you know, you might not find uh, a typeface on your system that uh, is what you're looking for. You might have to go and find one from a type foundry. And there are lots of different type foundries out there. There's one called Defont. And in Defont, you can uh, find different typefaces. Uh, you can download these. These are normally free um, to, to use, as long as you're using them for education and not commercial gain. Commercial gain is obviously if you make money from it. Um, but if you were to just, you want to use them for education or personal use, they're absolutely free. Um, that's the font. That's a free one. And then you've got my fonts, which isn't free. Um, but you, it's got a really nice sort of like way of um, displaying the typeface. So if I go to, for a serif typeface, did it hit it or did I end up clicking on that link? I don't know. So it'll now show the serif typefaces and they're not particularly any order if they're probably in most recently added first I don't know but the good thing about uh, my fonts is that it shows you um, how the, the the fonts used in in design so if you would just look at that you go hmm it looks all right but I don't care see but then when you see this you think okay I quite like that I quite like how it's been used so it gives you a little bit of an example about how the font can be used and also some some ideas about what you can do with it in terms of like additional font usage or combinations of fonts and things like that. So if you wanted a design that was looking more uh, retro, then you might pick up some inspiration from looking at this. What you can also do is you can also put in your own text. So say, for example, I know my text is lemon. It will now show me up here, not in these bits, but up here it will show me my um, word in that font. So I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. 
So that's nice, and that, that Alba looks quite nice, doesn't it? Quite uh, classy. Um, and you might find one that you like. So, you know, you might think, oh, actually, I quite like that Hanley Pro. However, you get there and you go, okay, uh, it costs uh, £3.98. Now, who knows, you might be um, quite wealthy um, and you're able to use that and spend that money. I don't know. But if you were creating a, um, a design for a client, then you'd probably have to buy it. Um, so it's probably a good idea to, to run things past clients before you do actually buy things because otherwise um, you, you can be spending money that you haven't got. Um, so yeah, my font's good, but obviously you have to pay for it. And then also, uh, it's part of the Creative Cloud, which if I can find the Creative Cloud, that's OneDrive, that's Creative Cloud. Um, if you go to Creative Cloud, you can actually search for fonts on Adobe. So Adobe has their own fonts as well. So as you can see, this Mika, uh, this font is one that I've downloaded recently. Um, so you can browse for more fonts. And again, these are free um, and you should be able to download them as part of your uh, educational license. And again, here you've got like different sort of like tags. So brush, rough, fun, futuristic. So let's click on fun. Let's see what we've got there. And similarly to my fonts, uh, Adobe has got a similar sort of like thing, a way of displaying it. So you get to see things used in in design. So like things like drop shadows. Um, so yeah, you can start to see how a font is used. I don't know why I did that. Um, and it gives you a little bit more understanding about what the, the font's capable of in terms of a design sense. Adobe are adding fonts to their library all the time. Um, you know, they're kind of like buying up my, more and more tight find, foundry uh, fonts. So if you need it, you can probably find it on Adobe as well. So three different places there to find fonts as well as your library within your uh, system. Um, so when we're in here, we need to start thinking about how we can use our design. So let's let's have a look, see what, what we've got here. Well, I quite like, I want it to look quite classy. Um, so I quite like that. So that's quite a classic looking typeface. And we could combine it with a, a bit of a script. So. So let's change that to flavor. So let flavor. So what happens if we put those two together and we have something like that? Let's oh, cancel that. What does that look like? That looks okay. So you could like have them like that. Let's copy and paste that. So what happens if it was flavored or sparkling water, sparkling water Oops, spell it right so mm, not so sure about that now so copy and paste now what happens if we go for a, a more traditional font so we've used a serif font for our main one so what if we go for a sans serif font for the next bit so let's have a look see what we've got so anvers Arial. let's have a look we'll see what we've got something that's nice and neat. So that one's quite, let's go for Corbell. So that looks, that's nice and neat. Let's look a little bit smaller. So that looks okay. So what about if we change the case? So you can have uppercase and lowercase. So these at the moment are, you've got an uppercase M because it's capital letter and then lowercase the rest of it. So let's change this case to uppercase. So what we can do is go to type, uh, change case and we're going to say uppercase so that's now in capitals that looks okay looks a bit too big compared to the melon so let's make it a bit smaller we can also go to our character palette and we can change things like spacing so in this little area we can add spacing between the letters so you can see they're getting more spaced out and it's you a lot of the times when you see that you'll see this in like high value items that they space the letters out it kind of like makes them look more uh, regal more 
and more expensive. So, you know, whereas this looks a little bit cheap and cheerful, this has sort of like a completely different uh, level of price bracket associated with it. So type can make a big difference to how it's perceived by the, the, the audience. And so you need to think carefully about when you're using uh, typefaces to make sure that you, you pick the right typeface. So let's have a look at this. So if we look at this now as a as group, it looks quite nice. I think there's a bit of a problem here with the spacing of the M and the E, because you see the E and the L here. Now, if we go to character and we change that to optical here, it should, yes, it did. So it should like just get rid of that and make it more um, balanced. You can change it manually. So I could just highlight the M and say, okay, um, I want it to be um, minus 75 or minus 50. And then that will decrease the space between the M and the E. So you can do it all manually if you want to. Uh, and it's a sign of a good designer as well. A sign of a good designer is not just like typing in the word. It's a, it's making sure that the inter-character spacing is accurate. Uh, it's what's called kerning. And there's a good website for that. So um, if you go on to a website called Learn to Kern, Learn to Kern is a, a game and it helps you understand the spacing relationships between letters. So you, you position your letter where you think it should go, click done, and it gives you a score out of 100. So then you think, right, this, this one's too far towards the P. So can you move the P as well? Yeah, so we need to move the, can we, can't move the E, but we can move the P and the, the Y and the P. So we want to get them so that they're right. So let's look at that. Oh, 73 bit out there. Uh, so Eve's can't move the oh, yes. So again, how's going to go on with this one? 84. So as you can see, um, it just helps you understand that space in relationship and getting that visual uh, accuracy. Um, and that's really important when you when you're designing. So back in Illustrator, um, so I'm happy with this. I'm happy with how that's looking. So let's add another artboard and let's bring that across and let's think about how we can bring these. So we're, we're doing the melon one, weren't we? So let's bring this across, copy, paste. So if I was to group that and bring it to the front, not object range, bring to front. Let's just see what happens. So when I put it over the top, it's quite difficult to read it, especially the sparkling water bit, because we've got black in the pattern and the letters are very thin. Um, so when we've got this all on top of each other, it's very difficult for our eyes to, to make out what things are. We could change the color. So let's change the color to white and let's see what happens there. Yeah, it's not really helped it. It's not made any difference to this. We still can't see this really very well. So as a as we com, uh, com consider these design elements, we need to sort of like, you know, leave a trail so we can see what's happening and see what we can we can do. Um just by copying and pasting and seeing what happens. Now, sometimes the best way to make things work is to separate them so physically separate them so that they're not touching um that seems to work okay let's just make that fit that a little bit better um so certainly that seems to look okay so if we bring the color across from well if we do the pattern we get that don't we um if we get the color from the background which i think is this one i seem to have been that one is it that one Oh, it's, we've made a tint, didn't we? Um, so you can bring the color across. Or was it that one? I think it's that one. So if we bring the color across, now we've picked the color from the background. It's the stronger value, so it's darker. And we can still see this. So everything has got its own space. So if we copy and paste this and we create this, 
we're starting to get a design whereby if it was like a can or something we've got an area in the middle that's uh, separate the pattern occupies the space we know we can't really do it with it on top of each other and I'm sure if we copy and paste that that we won't even if we change this color to this one yeah you still you still can't see it so we need some sort of other way of separating it and to a process of elimination without changing lots of different colors keep it simple stupid so you know we've got some colors already there so we might as well retain some of those colors it wouldn't make sense to have that in a completely different color like orange because well there's no orange on the rest of it you know it would make sense to have the the pink um but it wouldn't be it wouldn't make sense to have I know that's not quite the pink, so if we change the colour, um, it's a bit warmer. So if we change it to a colour that was close to that colour, you know that might work as well. Um, we can actually access colours from within the artwork. So if we go back to our melon, we can copy that. And this is why we keep things because we might need them again. So we could actually create a swatch out of that. Or so we can just draw a square and then say I want it that colour. So now I can select that and say I want it that colour. So it's now exactly the same colour as the, the flesh part of the, the melon. And we can try different things. So you know that's with that colour. So copy and paste. Let's bring it over here. So we added the other colour before, didn't we? So let's leave that one as it was so we can see the two. And then we'll copy and paste again. And then let's see what happens if what happens if we put a colour in the background of this. We might might be able to put a colour in, in this. So what happens if this was that green colour? So now we need to send that to the back. Object arrange send to back. So that's not working because it's like really optical. So we now need to make that white so that stands out. We could also make that the color of the flesh. So if we wanted to make a color swatch of that, we use the eyedropper to select that. And then we can maybe use the that color. And that looks nice. That looks okay. So we're getting somewhere. And uh, let's, uh, let's add another artboard. We're motoring along now, so let's copy and paste. And let's try having that the pink. So let's we know that, that works with that colour. How's this looking? So you know this is looking really nice. I'm not sure which one I like the best yet. Whether it's this one or this one. Um you know what we do a lot like in its own. That looks quite nice. So there's there's something happening there that's that's working. Um, it all kind of like ties in quite nicely. It's got a nice feel to it, and that's just one example. You know we could try with the lemon one going a, down a different route and seeing what happens. Um, and that's what design is all about. It's like it's it's not a case of like thinking of the answer. It's a case of doing and seeing the answer come to you by a series of changes. Now I'm not sure whether that's too light at the moment. So if let's go to the character and see if there's any options within. So there is. So the corbel's got a lighter regular. So let's go for let's go for regular to see if that's strong enough to stand out. That's a bit better. That's definitely that might be a little bit too much if we go to bold. Let's see a bold. That might be too much. No, that's okay. Um, so let's just set, get those positions. So we go to our line, and we want to align them this way. That's it, because that gets them into position. So let's get that right. Now we could could use the line tool to align this one and this one together, and that would sort that out. But that's looking good. Now, when you group things, you might have seen me double clicking. Um, so when you group something, you can see I can't access that 
that text on its own. But by double clicking, I go inside the group. So I'm now inside, it's it's like grouping. And I can now select that text or that text and do what I want to do with it, whether I change its color. So I could change that to a darker color. So I could change that to, I don't think the green will work, but we'll try it. Let's try that. No, look, you, whoa, that's quite optical, that. So undo. So we're starting to get somewhere. And, you know, once you start getting getting to a place like this, you can start thinking, okay, let's, let's, let's push it a little bit further and let's start adding some, some branding in there. So maybe, I don't know, maybe this is made by Sainsbury's. So let's look for Sainsbury's logo. See if we can find a Sainsbury's logo. So their their logo's orange, which isn't going to probably work with our design. <laughs> so let's not go for Sainsbury's. Um, let's go Marks and Spencers. Marks and Spencer. Oh, that works much better. A nice dark black logo would be lovely. Um, let's have a look at that one. Let's copy that one. So copy copy image. And then let's go paste. Oh, that's big. So when you get things coming in really big like this, you can scale them down using your handles. Or you can go to Object, Transform, and Scale. And you can just say, OK, well, I think it's probably going to be about 20%. And you'll see it's gone down by, by that. And once it gets to a decent size, you can probably do the handles yourself then. So let's, let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's pop this at the top. Let's get that in the middle. So you might see these little pink things. These are what's called smart guides. So smart guides help you to align things to things that are already there on the pet on the on the board on the um, the artboard. So if you see a little bit pink line popping up, it means that it's in the middle because these things have all got little handles. These little handles, so it says it's in the middle of that. So that's starting to look something good. And let's think what else we have on a, a can. So there's probably um, a barcode, so let's look for a barcode. Images. Let's just find a, a decent barcode. Again, copy. And again, it's, it's, it's okay when you're mocking things up to use these things. Again, scale, so object transform, scale. I was going to do about 10% this. Okay. Now it's done like a funny thing on that, so that's gone the wrong way. So let's we can't use that one. So let's use a different one. Let's use this one. Copy image. Paste. That one looks okay. And we can scale this one down. There we go. It helps you make noises when you design as well. Like and it uh, it makes it more exciting. So barcode in there, and then probably like a size. Maybe this. I think. Cans are like 330 milliliters, aren't they? So let's let's pop a, a scale a size on there as well. Let's pop a a size of drink, and that's starting to look like a piece of packaging. So we've gone from you know the start where we were designing uh, just the shapes of the the, the pattern, so like the the fruit and uh, lemon and the melon. And through a series of changes, we've gone through pattern and we've improved the pattern. We've looked at combinations. We've looked at text. We've looked at a combination of text and pattern to a point where we've got something that now looks like a piece of design. And it's got all the elements to it. So it's got a logo, it's got an, a name, it's got some colour, it's got some image, it's got a barcode. You can't design with keeping things off. Yes, they'll look good, but sometimes you've got to add those things on because they're going to go on eventually. Um, so you might as well design with them on rather than just going, oh, it looks great now, and then somebody puts a barcode on it, it breaks it completely. So always think about the elements that are going to go on to there. And so you can always do some research. Uh, you know, you can just go on to a, you know, can of sparkling water and look at some images 
and you'll see what other people have done. So you can see what, you know, they've got 330 mils. Um, you know, that one's got like a, a block here. Uh, you can see what they've done. Now these are, these these look quite nice, don't they? Look quite interesting. These are very much like pattern based. What we've just done, um, you know, it might be quite nice to use in a bit of inspiration, and maybe have a a white box like that, you know, and think, okay, maybe maybe that would work. Having a white box in the middle of it, so why not? Let's 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 try it. That's um, that's what research is for to give you sort of like direction. So let's just try this. Let's just take that off there. Let's turn that into a. A shape now we're gonna to need to extend this so we're gonna to have to like now a pattern might not be big enough oh it is it's all right that's okay and this one pull this on all the way down okay and let's move that over there and let's bring that in there bring that to the front object arrange bring to front And let's bring this down. It's going to have to be a bit smaller to fit on. Again, bring this front object to range. So that's an option. Maybe that goes up there then. And maybe again, object range. Bring to front. We change the color to that creamy color. Um, maybe where do, where could that go now? So we'll have to think about what we can do with that. Mm. So you can make that bigger. You can make it the same size as that, but that might be too too big. That's definitely too big. Maybe at the bottom? No. Nope. Maybe in the middle. Let's keep it in the middle. And let's bring that down. So let's bring these bits down. Okay, that's starting to work again. That's uh that's solved the problem a little bit. And you might want that to be square, so it's the same as the logo. And then we might want that a little bit smaller, so we can just bring that down a little bit. So And there's another solution. That's uh, another idea. Not sure which one I prefer. Um, again, you can go to another level and go, maybe it's too dark now. So copy and paste and bring across and then just flip this over. So let's do this in the creamy color and put the text in the pink. Another option. Um, and this is what design is. Design is just a case of of oops of just a series of experiments and looking at things. And when you come to finishing something and thinking, well, I think this is where we are, this is a, this is the end. You can then present all these to your client or you can, you know, present a range of them to different people and say which what do people think, do a bit of market research and get other people's opinions. When you're so close to it as a designer you can't always see what what other people can see and you're not going to be the ones buying these things you're the, just the designer you're not designing for yourself you're designing for an audience a different group of audience and maybe people that are not your age so sometimes getting a, a target market audience to look at this and and give you some feedback will be really valuable you know i can see that like as a carton now like um you know like a if it wasn't sparkling water, maybe it's um, uh, natural juice. Drink. You know, maybe maybe it's a carton. And because we've not got any parameters to this this brief, and we are a little bit in control of what we do. There's a little bit more scope to to play with it and see what 
see what happens when we do different things. So that's a little bit too bad. I'm going to make that down to regular now. It's a bit too, too big. So yeah, so I could see that now as a as a carton, working quite well as a carton. The probably a bit too tall now. Maybe cartons of this sort of size. Um, bring that up. That might work. I can see that in somebody's fridge maybe. And it looks quite refreshing. It looks very very melon looking. Uh, it, you know, it, to me it looks like a melon kind of colour. You know, you'd see that on a shelf. It looks quite trendy as well. So, yeah, I mean, there you are. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm 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 gonna st I'm gonna stick there. I think I think I'm gonna st say that's that's where I'm gonna leave it. Now, that's the design. We can do other things to make this into a mock-up. So we can. And in future lessons, I'll show you how to do that. But this, that's just the design. And we can take that forward and put onto cartons uh, and things like that in Photoshop. So it, as and when we get to that, I'll show you how to do that. But um, but that, yeah, that, that wraps up this video sequence with an illustrator. And, you know, enjoy your process. You know, you should end up with, like, say, a few artboards with lots of things on. And then the good thing about that is you can take screen grabs of this and put into your work. So, you know, you can do a screen grab. So it's um, Control, Shift and S on the keyboard will give you a, a clipping uh, cutter like this. And then I can draw around this and it will save me an image. And then I can save those and put them onto uh, my work. So I've got the Illustrator file and I can just do little Windows, Shift S, draw around those, and again I've got another image of that. Come back here and get the text, so Windows, Shift S. And now I've got a series of images that I can use within my work, so I don't just submit my Illustrator document, I can submit a, a written piece of work that talks about my process, that talks about my decisions that I made and the reasons why I changed something, you know, what the reasons why I chose the font, or the reasons why I chose the colour or the position or whatever it might be. And you can put a story together so it's a bit more informative. Um, and then the viewer, whoever's reading it, whether it's me, me or or somebody else that's that's looking at it, gets a little bit of an insight into the reasons why you've done something. It's not just, here's a picture make your mind up whatever it, you feel it is. So I'm going to wrap it up there and I'll see you again in the next video. Okay, bye.